Hello everyone. This video is going to talk about uh, a code I wrote for capturing the flame edge, edge of a shadow graph image or, or detecting the flame edge in a shadow graph image. So this this image that we're looking at is a shadow graph image. Uh, you can see the burner here with the flame and then uh, the orange orange lighting that you see is is residual light that comes through the lens uh, from the flame itself. And what we want to do is turn this into a figure that looks like this, where we have our flame edge and the shadow graph, and then we're detecting the, f the edge of the flame itself. So we're going to ignore the top and we're going to ignore the bottom because it curves up here and we get a little uh, less intensity at the top. So really what we're interested in in a laminar flame is the angle of this edge anyway, so the middle is the best place to find it. Uh, so the code is fairly straightforward. We're going to start with our normal clear all, close all, CLC. We're going to define uh, where the file is located, you know, C colon backslash, wherever the picture is in, in the directory. We're going to use the im read function to read the image into MATLAB. Then in, in this case, the best, uh, it's a three color image. Now technically, a, a shadow graph should be a black and white image because uh, you're just looking at the gradient in, in the change of intensity of the light. But since we have bleed through of the flame illumination itself, we have all three colors. So we're going to change and look at the blue channel only. So to do that, we're going to use this IM1. Uh, we're going to take the IM1 variable that we uh, defined to pull in the image itself. So this variable now represents the image. And then we're going to. Uh, take the intensity from the X and Y and only use the, the this three that are the blue color. So this is the, the syntax to look at the blue channel only. Then we're going to crop the image. Uh, if you'll notice before this image and the figure image we're only looking at right up the flame right above the burner. So you can do that for any uh, you can change the, <coughs> the cropping uh, depending on how the image you use depending on how your image is uh, taken. And then we're going to resize the image. We're basically going to reduce the resolution of the image so there's not as many pixels for us to deal with. So this is what this IM resize command does. You don't have to do it, but uh, it saves in computation time. Then we're going to, so uh, that's all kind of getting the image into MATLAB. Then we're going to define uh, the limits of where we're going to calculate things about the image. So we're going to have a Y max, a Y min, an X min left, and a Y or an X max left, and an X min left. The reason they're called X min left is obviously we're just looking at the left side of the of the flame image itself. So Y is in the vertical direction obviously, but it's flipped so the The minimum numbers are at the top and the maximum numbers are at the bottom. And the X is a normal uh, moving from left to right. So we look, these are pixel numbers, uh, or these are pixel values. Uh, this delta Y is just we're going to move one pixel at a time. This is just a counter. And this Y sub 1 is just to define uh, this initial Y as the minimum Y min that we've just defined. So the main calculation is going to exist in this while loop uh, that I just highlighted. So we're going to talk about what is in this while loop. So we're looking at the left side, like I mentioned before. We're going to define uh, i is equal to our y of a a. So we have a is equal to one, and it it, it increases by one every time the while loop counts. We have uh, just a counter to find here, and then we're going to do a loop to look at the intensity levels across uh, each row. So we're going to say, okay, k is equal to x min, x min left, 2, x max left, and then uh, we're going to do, define a variable, we'll just call it p, p of k is equal to i um, of i comma k. So we walk all the way across the picture at one level. 
and define this variable p. And then, so this, we want to turn it into a number that MATLAB can recognize because when it's pulled in as an image, it's something else. I forget what it is. It's a, it's a UINT8, a unit 8. Um, whatever that means, it's not a number that MATLAB can mess with, so use this double command to to turn it into a uh, a normal number like you would just input. So we're walking from left to right and we're going to get the values of the intensity levels in the image at this line. Then, so we're going to take that value, that it's a relatively jagged line, so we're going to smooth it, we're going to do a simple low pass filter here. All we're doing is averaging uh, 10 points, 5 points on each side, or I think it's 11 points because you count one in the center. Uh, five points on each side, and we're going to take the average of that and define that as as PP smooth. Then we're going to calculate the difference in the intensity levels as we walk across the image. So we're going to say, all right, so the delta P is is the change in P is equal to the PP smooth at uh, this DD is a counter DD plus one minus the PP smooth at DD. So all we did was walk across from left to right and take the difference in the variable. So at at, at uh, PP smooth of 2 minus 1, we get a value. And then at 3 minus 2, we get a value. So we have this change in P. Then we're going to calculate the max in the max in the change in P. So we're looking at the maximum change in intensity. So this is what's going to happen at the flame edge. So the flame edge should have the maximum change in intensity. So I didn't mention that earlier, but that's how uh, the coding scheme has worked. So this line, uh, this max, you're going to get the max value, and then we're going to get the max position. And the position is really what we're interested in. Um, so that's a simple line. And then we had an offset due to the way we uh, did all the calculations above, so we just uh, changed this offset max delta p position of a is equal to the max d position of a plus x min left plus 10. Uh, because of the averaging, we, we need this 10 and then the x min left because we want to move it to where it is originally. And then we have our, our counter iterations and then we're going to plot the figure. So if you want to plot an image in MATLAB with lines on it, you want to define your figure, uh, CLF to clear the figure, I am show, show your image, turn hold on, and then plot whatever you want to plot. Uh, and that'll show up on top of the image in the figure, and then turn hold back off. And so that's how we get this image here, where we have our points uh, detected mostly along the edge of the flame. Now you can see we have some outliers. We have one at the top and this one down at the bottom. Uh, I wanted to show the outliers. Uh, I could have shrunk the selection area so it looked like the code was perfect, but it, it's really not. You have outliers, especially when the images get worse. Um, if you have nice, clean, crisp images, it's not so bad, but this one's a little bit gummy. You have all these spots um, that mess with the intensity levels. So if you have these outliers, you have to come up with some type of filtering al algorithm. Either you average the slope along the line and throw out the ones that are different, uh, or you, you take the mean of the slopes, or you take calculate all the slopes and take the medium one or the median one, or, or something like that, where you're gonna you're gonna throw out the the anomalous anomalous points in some some known fashion, some known automated fashion. Because you don't you don't want to go in and select these manually. You want to be able to do this in an automated fashion. So this is uh, just a simple method for calculating <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the flame edge or the edge of an image using MATLAB based on the idea of the, the edge is the position of maximum intensity. So I hope you found this useful and have a good day.